Sorry, was that me? What's going on? I bent over. <laughs> they all kind of just stared at me blankly when I said, you're going to go sit in a cave? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> it kind of makes me concerned what's happening at home. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a normal thing we do. We get stuck in a dark room and it's kind of way, the way it goes. Um, we want to take a minute to pray uh, this morning before we kind of launch into this uh, this message that I feel like I really need to take to heart myself. But uh, some things we want to be praying for. Dave uh, Fretz mentioned this morning that uh, uh, Crescent Lodge is kind of shut down, all kinds of sickness, and uh, got some concern there. So a number of people are ill. So we definitely want to be praying <clears throat> for the staff and the residents uh, there for what's going on. Uh, so be uh, committing that to your time of prayer uh, also, we just want to continue to pray for whatever it is that God has uh, for us as his people as we kind of move into a, a different uh, pace and uh, time of the season. Summer starts to get like the month of June, I know, is really crazy for people with kids. And we got, they seem to put all the school trips and activities into three weeks. And so that will be fun. And, uh, and then we have these different modes where people go off on vacation and I was just encouraged uh, the other day by a friend of mine to say, how is it that you will uh, continue to abide in Christ and in the words of the Lord in the midst of a season where just rhythms change and you have kind of uh, different things uh, that you're doing and places you're going? And then how is it that you'll encourage others uh, to uh, continue that abiding and awareness of Jesus in our lives and being in the scripture and learning from the Lord uh, in the midst of uh, jetting off to places and having kids home over the summer and stuff. It's just something to be aware of. So I'd like us to take a minute to pray uh, for that. Uh, is there other uh, things that uh, we can be praying uh, for, for you, uh, ways to celebrate with you, encourage uh, one another? for those exams for sure although grade nines will never seem to write exams that's a new thing of course that was the case when I was in school yeah Jack Sure. The other thing I want to thank uh, was several of the members of the church that stopped over at Brewfest yesterday at, at the booth and said hi and actually bought some stuff and took some orders. Um, I got the, the names of people that have been here forever and I haven't got to know them. They're going to have to forgive me because I'm old. They're going to have to reintroduce themselves to me again. <laughs> Yeah, you are old. Um, and uh, no, I really just appreciate you, Jack. And uh, yeah, maybe it's just a good idea just to always introduce yourself, even if you know somebody. Hi, Amelia. I'm Dan. Remember me? <laughs> okay, just, uh, just in case someone doesn't know your name, just always good because we continue to grow as God's church and there are more and more people and uh, it's harder to uh, know everybody. Uh, and I don't think that's even maybe necessarily realistic. Uh, but uh, it is good to kind of get out of our areas of comfort and get to know other people. And we're definitely praying that uh, you don't let your heart attack you this summer, Jack. Womp womp. <laughs> that was his wife that said that, just so you know. I just went on her coattails. Yeah, Carrie. Like Lauren passed or his? Lauren passed. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. 
Trevor, I think I saw your hand pop up. Jermaine. Let's take a minute to join our hearts and our minds together. Uh, Lord, we just want to take a minute to express our thanks, appreciation, love for you. We've sang our love out loud. We've spoken words of your love <clears throat> to us. And we just want to say thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for working in the midst of hard situations, difficult times. Thank you for the joy that you bring uh, to our lives through situations, through family, friends, interactions. We thank you for your church. We thank you for people that can encourage us and that we can get to know Thank you for just the opportunity that people had to uh, serve our community with breakfast yesterday and supporting the uh, Kinets and supporting uh, Spring Fest and all the people that were able to kind of go over and see uh, the different vendors and especially to be an encouragement to Jack and for him to get to know others more. We thank you for those community works that we can join together in. Lord, we ask that you would help us in the midst of seasons that do feel heavy and we're worried, we're concerned, we're anxious. Would you help us to be able to hold things with open hands, that we wouldn't clench onto things and try to just make things work in our own efforts or abilities or resources? but that we could really surrender, trust our lives, trust the lives of others we care about and are concerned for, to you. Lord, we can't, uh, lift up to you the, the needs at uh, Crescent Park Lodge and uh, whatever is going on there with the sickness and the number of people that are affected, Lord, I pray that you would bring healing. We want strength and wellness to come into those lives. And so I pray you'd keep people safe. I pray that you would continue to work through Dave's life and his example of faith and love for you as he talks and interacts with others there. Lord, we pray for all the students that are wrapping up this school year, uh, particularly thinking of the high school students as exams kind of uh, are, will be starting soon and that final push to completion, that you would help them to, um, yeah, to just finish well. Pray that for all of our kids and uh, students right now, that they would be able to just persevere uh, through to the end of June, and uh, that you would look after them for the plans that are happening this summer. We pray for safety for Jack and Sue as they head off to the cottage, and for others who will be going to different places and having vacation times or trips or outings, that you would, Lord, provide safety. Would you give us health 
and you would protect, just reminded of the ways that you faithfully guided and protected Jack last year and gave encouragement to Sue and the rest of her family and others that the medical staff and just everything that everything that happened um, that they would just be mindful of as an encouragement uh, that you are present even in the midst of catastrophe and situations that we don't understand and that they can speak of that to others. Lord, we pray for Trevor's mom and do ask that you just continue to bring healing to their family through the loss of Trevor's brother uh, back in the spring and would ask that you would help her specifically in her processing of that loss and the grief that she has that you would help her to know that you are sitting with her, that you are weeping when she weeps, mourning when she mourns. Remind that to Trevor too, that your spirit is with them and that you, you want to work in the midst of those heavy thoughts and feelings. Lord, we pray for Steph's dad, too, with this upcoming uh, surgery with his colon. Lord, would you give him rest and preparation for that time and that everything would go well, your hands would be just upon that procedure, and uh, it, would, it would be well for him, physically as well as mentally and spiritually. Lord, we think of... Um, Lacey and Carrie and others who have uh, uh, known um, this friend that has passed. Um, we pray for Lauren's family and everybody that's kind of working through that grief. Uh, also that somehow, in some way, you would be able to speak your goodness, uh, your faithfulness in the midst of these hard things and you would help sustain and give strength and hope in the midst of all of this. Lord, we continue to lift up our camp ministry, too, uh, as we look for staffing and encourage uh, kids to come along and participate this summer, that your work would be done in the, in the lives of all the people that will be there, staff and campers, and that you would provide the safety that's needed, the care that's needed, everything that's needed in terms of um, being able to minister to families in this way. We continue to trust you in these things. And as we kind of are anticipating a season of uh, newness and change of pace and the summer coming, Lord, would you speak to our hearts about how it is you want us to abide with grief, to spend time recognizing your presence all around us and in us, working through us, working with us. Keep us mindful of the scriptures and the things that we can learn and understand there that have happened throughout history and the ways that you interact with people and the experiences that we have of listening to your Holy Spirit now and the things you're wanting to say to us and do in our lives and through our lives that you would Give us ears that can hear and eyes that can see. And that we wouldn't forget that we are in a lifetime here of training and growth and understanding. Speak through the words this morning through your scriptures. Help me to be mindful of the things your spirit is wanting to say. Keep listening. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give a special thank you to uh, Sherry and all the other individuals that helped with the breakfast yesterday. I know it was a big undertaking, and uh, I don't know how. Do you know how many people came through for breakfast? <laughs> it's only been the second year since uh, since COVID, and that's happened so. I think there was a little more traction this year than last year. Yeah, so so that's good. So just thank you so much to everybody 
who uh, were able to offer their time to help the connects and, and our community. Um, as we kind of go into uh, our uh, lesson for today, we've covered uh, a whole bunch of things about godly character, what character is, how it gives us freedom, why uh, sin is uh, necessary or helps us to develop godly character, which is why God doesn't just take any of that struggle away, but causes to uh, help us work in the midst of the struggles that we face, whether they be internal, uh, our own kind of sin, or external, uh, uh, through the, uh, the sin that's around us, uh, pressuring us, um, that we're in training and it develops godly character in us. And then we kind of looked last week at what godly character is not uh, when we're just kind of growing in knowledge or using a spiritual gift. Those things are all kind of part and parcel to who we are as people, as followers of Jesus, but it n doesn't necessarily translate into godly character. And so I wanted to just touch on a couple things that I think I really need to hear this morning uh, on why we should desire to grow in godly character. And I'd imagine that anyone who's chosen to trust Jesus and follow him has come to a realization of a couple things. One, that God loves change. I'm always amazed at, when you look at the life of the church and just as people, how often we struggle with change and we fight against it and we resist it even though the very God we love and serve, our faith is based on the principle of change. <laughs> God is at work changing, transforming lives, restoring, redeeming. Things are not what they were. They will keep becoming new. So that's my encouragement for you to say, embrace change. I know it can be challenging. You go, God must be up to something, that things are changing. Because that is what God is all about. God never changes, but he changes everything. For good, for his good. Our faith is built on that, Jesus making things new. The other thing is that when we trust Jesus, it means that it includes you in that change. We are faced with change, transformation. And sometimes we welcome it in certain parts and other areas we really resist it because lots of people just don't like change. You go, God, work in these parts of my life or work in those people but I'm good I'm pretty good like I'm not perfect but like I'm pretty good uh, don't mess with me too much Lord please but God is including you in the change if you want to stay the same as you've always been you won't experience the fullness of the life that God has intended for you. And as we get older, we do really become that can't teach an old dog new tricks adage where you're like, well, I'm 10 years older than what I was. It was easy for me to learn stuff, new stuff before, but now, boy, Jack, you must have a lot of hard <laughs> things to learn. But we can continue to learn and we can continue to grow regardless of our age. God continues to work through us no matter how short we are. <laughs> wow, to hear Josh say that, a short, older person was so <laughs> instrumental in his life. If you're a short, older person, a short, taller person, a young, taller person, a young, shorter person, a big person, little person, Person who likes to climb on rocks. Isn't that that commercial? <laughs> what was that commercial? I'm, see, I, now I'm old. Hot dogs. Armor hot dogs. The dogs kids love to bite. See, I just came to my mind from way back in the day. All those kinds of kids. All those kinds of people. We all have things that God is wanting to do in us, but it requires change. And so I want to encourage you to desire to want to grow in godliness and character for three simple reasons, okay? And I'm always reminded, when I think about change, reminded of this song 
that uh, uh, was when I was maybe in college or something. It was a sign that said, change, but be yourself. Change, but be yourself. And I'm always interested by that phrase. Uh, as I think about my life in Christ and how God has made us to be, that we're actually, through our process of change, with God working on us, we're becoming more like the person we're supposed to be. See, sin and this world and all the impacts of it has created brokenness. And so at, at the outset, we're kind of the least like the person God made us to be. Because sin is marred and is stained and is shamed and has affected us. And so we're in this process of becoming more like ourselves as we develop godly character. And we reflect the image of the one who we were created to reflect. To be made in the image of God. All people share the image of God, whether they trust Jesus or not. And as we continue to walk and grow and change, that reflection becomes a little more clear. So we can find change by becoming more of the people God intended us to be. So three reasons why I think we should desire to grow in godly character. The first one is that we should desire to grow in godly character because God requires it of us. He expects it. He commands it. Because it's his longing for us, for betterment. It's actually commanded when we read Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 10. This is what the Apostle Paul says. Put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy. Don't be an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. We don't like to talk about that because we, it's hard for us maybe to wrap our mind around the understanding of God's perfection and anger with sin with his intense unflinching, unconditional love for us as people who wrestle with sin. In verse 7 it says, he used to, you used to do these things when your life was still part of the world. But now it's time to get rid of anger. Get rid of rage, malicious behavior, slander, abusive speech. Don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wickedness. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. We talked about how the idea that we uh, have come to trust Jesus and yet we've got all these patterns, all these things that we've learned just to get by in life, just to survive. And so we're shedding those things. But as we shed those things, something needs to come in and replace them. Otherwise, we just kind of fall back into the same old habits and patterns and ways we know how to handle people that are upset with us, people that we get upset with, people that uh, speak against us, people that get angry with us, people that we think aren't you know, doing their fair share, or people that are uh, greedy or selfish or whatever it is. We have these ways that we handle it. And if we reflect and kind of do a self-inventory, we, we realize, yeah, maybe some of these ways aren't how God designed me to react to people. And so we have to consider what it is we're putting on new, and God is showing us what that new self will look like for each of us. Did you know that God expects us to obey him and to follow his ways? We're not just dirty sinners saved by grace. We are changed in our position to God. But there's an expectation that we listen, that we obey, that we grow in our understanding and we find maturity. 
The problem with us is that we put that on other people, how that should look like, the timeline, how long it should take, and we go, no, this is God's plan for each person. He is helping you figure this out. But I think too often we don't talk about the reality that God has made us holy and expects us to be holy. We lean really hard on God's grace and don't ever require anything of ourselves. We go, God's forgiving. God's gracious. But no, there's an expectation for obedience. There's another song that I thought of this week that kind of talks about this idea of being able to impart things to your kids. And it's one of my favorite bands. And we have, I think, Maybe we even have a poster of it in our house. It says, when the kids are old enough, we're going to teach them to fly. They're going to go. They're going to leave the nest. But if we just push them out, <laughs> what's going to happen? It's flat. Kids need training. They need guidance. They need experience of success and failure. So as we're raising kids, as we're grandparents, aunts, uncles, any kids that are around us, we have these opportunities to, we're teaching them how to eat. I remember the first time, you know, uh, helping your kid, helping Isaac, thinking about like him, how to learn to eat with a spoon and the, uh, the exciting things that come with that. Jen, where's Cam at with all that right now? Loves feeding himself. Yeah, I can't get him to eat that Okay. <laughs> so yeah, he's take charge. I'm going to figure this out. But imagine if you never gave him a spoon. You know, like that would be like, we, we go along with these things. We teach these things and impart them because we have understanding that there's growth and development that needs to happen. Teaching kids to talk. Teaching kids, uh, maybe some of you go, I wish I had done that. <laughs> but teaching them to talk, teaching them to walk, teaching them games and sports, and uh, teaching them how to interact with relationships. I was showing Isaac how to properly use a claw hammer yesterday. And I was like, no, don't do it that way, do it this way. And you check that out, and you go, oh yeah, this is much easier. And so there's this idea of imparting growth, wisdom, understanding, and the practice of those things. And we all have the opportunity to do that in kids' lives around us. We don't expect kids to go, all right, you're, you gotta figure it out now, right? You're on your own. They would just be stunted. And the same is with God's relationship to us. He is our loving Father. And so you go, I guess there's things you still want to teach me and to learn. You're not just gonna leave me high and dry. No, you're guiding me. He's guiding each and every one of you. Sometimes you just have to wake up and realize what it is that maybe he is showing us or saying to us. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, it says, But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. That means in our conduct, in how we live, in dealing with other people, because you are special to God, is one term that it refers to when it talks about holiness. Because you are holy, special to God, you will be different from the world around you. Because God is different from the world around him and us because of the imperfections. And so in him setting us apart, there is something he's doing. You are in training. You go, okay, I want that. I want to learn how to eat with the spoon. I want to ride the bike. I want to be able to learn that sport or know how to use that tool or that resource uh, in my life. And God's like, yeah, that's what I made you for. You don't just go, well, oh, God will... He'll be okay if I just don't ever get anything figured out. <laughs> you want more for your kid, right? I hope. That's what God wants for you. 
continue to learn and to grow and understand. The second thing is that if we don't desire to grow in godliness, we can uh, insult God's spirit, his spirit of grace. Let me read for you this passage in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 29. The writer of Hebrews, my one professor in school said, whoever she may be, wink, said, dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we've received knowledge of the truth, there's no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There's only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refuses to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of his promise, his covenant, which made us holy, as if it were common and unholy, and have insulted the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. So do we see what the writer of Hebrews is saying? He's talking about having kind of a laissez-faire attitude towards God's sacrifice, towards God's plan and provision and the life of Jesus. It's special, it's holy, it's set apart, and yet we can live as if I've I just struggle, and this is who I am, and there's no way for me to improve. Laissez-faire. What does that mean in simple terms? Well, it's a French phrase. Anybody French here? Anybody Frenchies? <laughs> Laissez-faire. It basically, actually quite literally means allow to do, with the idea of being... Uh, just let people do as they choose. Like, meh, kind of whatever. And we often have that when it comes to God's forgiveness. I'm so glad God forgives. Ugh. Well then, we aren't learning from our training if we have that kind of laissez-faire attitude. Just whatever will be, will be. Whatever happens, happens. And I'm just kind of in the mix of it all, floating around. We aren't learning from our training. We aren't learning from our education, our experience. And we make Jesus common and unholy, not special and set apart as it actually is, as he actually is. Now, there's a third great reason to develop growth in godly character. And it's that these commands... This expectation comes with wonderful promises. So when God says, uh, yeah, there's an expectation for you to continue to grow and mature and, and have momentum and be moving forward and then imparting that to others and helping others. And sometimes in life it feels like one step forward and two steps back. Uh, but through uh, those routines and those rhythms, we experience continued growth. And he says there's Wonderful promises because of that growth. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter writes, Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises. So godly character or the fruit of the Spirit in our lives comes with promises. If we have these things, there's promises from God. Here's what he goes on to say. We have these precious promises so that through them, through those promises, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. That's an amazing promise. The participation in the divine nature sounds mysterious and awesome. And so I want to grow in godly character just to know what that will be like. What is that like? What is that feel like? What, what is that experience like in my life? And then that being able to escape corruption, being able to escape evil and the pain, you go, who doesn't want that? Yeah, I want to distance myself from everything that's horrible and harmful to me and to other people. 
So growing in godly character gives a promise of that. In 1 Timothy, it says to train yourselves to be godly. It says for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So it's telling us that these promises are to be experienced now, but there's actually going to be impact on growing in godly character for whatever is next after this life. And so that seems mysterious and awesome and exciting. Doesn't it pique your curiosity to go, wow, what are these promises? How will I experience these things? Because I do want to keep training and striving and uh, discovering what it is that the Lord has for me. But it's not easy. And that's why we need one another. I shared with you a couple weeks back about how uh, I had a crazy high blood pressure and need to kind of lower that. And uh, so I've got to make these different changes in my life. And I've had some wonderful friends just here being able to continue to encourage me and uh, message me when it comes to that. How's that healthy lifestyle stuff going? And I go, it sucks and I hate it. Uh, but I know it's been beneficial for me. And uh, um, actually, I was just talking with Nigel the other night. He's like, have you noticed the, like, how, how you said, is anything easier? Are you finding, like, more energy or whatever? I'm like, no, no. Right? And maybe it's still to come. It's only been, like, what, 60 days of that? I don't know. Um, and uh, some changes are just harder to make than others. It's the same with growing in godly character. Some changes are really hard. But the promises, and it takes time. I want to share these inspirational words from a great theologian, Joe Dirt. <laughs> Joe Dirt says, all I got to do is keep being a good person. No matter what, good things will come my way. Everything's going to happen for me, just so long as I never have no in my heart. Just so long as I never have no in my heart. If you come at your spiritual life as like, oh, this is just who I am. I got these struggles, and they're always going to be struggles. I'm always going to have these difficulties. Life's just going to be hard. And yeah, life is hard. But there's ways for us to train and develop. Don't have no in your heart. Say to God, I have a desire to grow in godly character because there's things that you have for me because of that. And I'm excited about it. And while it's not easy, it's beneficial. And it's awesome. And it's good. Just had a conversation with someone the other day. And they kind of said something about the idea of God wanting us all to be happy. And I said, I don't think that's true. God wants what's good for us. And it's good but we know lots of things that are good that sometimes don't make us happy. But it's good. And we want what's good. Sometimes if we choose what's happy over what's good, you end up experiencing something very bad. <laughs> and that hurts. And you go, I wish I hadn't. I wish this never. And we have those regrets. So what are some of the promises that godly character brings? Well, there is a bunch, and we're going to be encouraged over the next number of weeks to learn some of them in the coming weeks. We're going to look at ten of them specifically, ten promises that God gives us that we're, that we're guaranteed when we grow in godly character. We're going to explore some of them, including creating perseverance in our faith, Effective prayer. Who doesn't want to have effective prayer? And helping others discover Jesus. That's just the tip of the iceberg. A taste of the promises that are to come. And we go, yeah, those things seem exciting. I want some of that in my life. And maybe you're here today and you go, I don't want that. I had never even thought of that. I don't even care. Would you consider this? Would you consider asking Jesus to give you a desire to grow in godly character even though you currently don't have that desire right now. Let's take a minute to pray 
and we've got lunch uh, afterwards, uh, after we uh, uh, pray, uh, and I'll just kind of kind of give some instruction about that, about uh, we'll maybe get some folks to grab some tables from the back room and kind of set up some tables for some folks to sit at, but it, there's also tables in the foyer, if you want to, you're hot, you want to go sit outside somewhere, like you can feel free to do that as well. Uh, let's take a minute to pray. Lord, uh, I do thank you for godly character. I thank you that you have expectations of us. You have hopes for us. You have purposes and plans and dreams and desires for us. And so I pray that you would grow in us a desire to lean into all of that. Lean into what it is you're saying and how it is you're wanting to bring about these wonderful changes and transformations and promises in our life. And that we wouldn't just shrug that off as like, oh yeah, take away our laissez-faireness. Take away the attitude of whatever will be, will be. And that we would hone in on something exciting that you are promising. And we would be excited. You build in us an excitement, Holy Spirit, and a desire to grow in godly character. And that you would grow in us that desire to continue to look for you and listen for you and hear what it is you're saying to us through the scriptures, what it is you're saying to us through one another in our conversations. And continue to inspire us. Help us to not have no in our heart. But that for you we would say yes. What is it you're saying to us, God? Give us the courage to say yes. We thank you for this food that we're going to have, too, and just appreciate so much the ways that you allow us to be able to spend time together, to eat together, to hang out together, to enjoy one another's company and get to know, uh, especially the Walsh family today. Uh, would you just bless our lives and bless this time and the season that we're moving into as your church and as your people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, we can uh, just head out and grab lunch. Uh, maybe we can.